Where do you go when you are upset? What do you do when you are feeling sad? When you are feeling in despair, when you are in a desperate, difficult situation, how do you cope in that moment? These are the kind of things that we're going to be considering this morning. As we make another shift this week, we're looking at yet another type of psalm as we have been for the last uh, couple weeks. And we're continuing our journey through the biblical poetry of the Old Testament. So this week, we'll be looking at Psalm chapter 13, which is a psalm of individual lament. So again, it's different from the ones that we have looked at, but it is also another psalm of David as the last two weeks we have looked at. So if you look at the words of the psalm, as we will in a few minutes, it's been theorized that of different periods of David's life when he may have written this psalm, as it is a psalm of lament, a psalm that he wrote when he was going through a difficult time. It's possible that he wrote it when Saul, King Saul was trying to kill him, was trying to hunt him down. It's possible that he could have written it when his son Absalom was trying to kill him. It's possible that he could have written it after he had committed his sin with Bathsheba and was ashamed of what he had done or many other difficult situations that he had endured. But note that in the words of the psalm and in the heading, it's not mentioned specifically uh, when it took place, why he wrote it. And with regards to this, Charles Spurgeon said that any attempt to link this psalm to a specific incident is simply just conjecture. Rather, the psalm, this psalm, gives voice to feelings that arise in any of the trials that a person undergoes in life. It's meant that we can read it and understand and as we go through those times that we would be able also to feel those words. And we know that David went through many difficult periods in his life as you can see throughout the Old Testament. And this psalm itself has a special place in my life as some of the other chapters that I've preached through the last few weeks did as well. For from when I was very young, I think I was about four or five years old, it was my first time uh, standing up on a stage reading from a pulpit in a church when I was young. I had the chance to read this psalm uh, in church. And from what my parents, what my mom reminded me last night was that people thought that I had memorized this psalm because they didn't think that a kid that young could be reading that well at such a young age. So, and I, apparently I recited it with a lot of emotion and conviction as I read it. I think we have a video of it somewhere, but I didn't have it this morning. But I'll do my best to reprise that this morning as we read through, as we consider the words of the psalm. So before we get into it, let's read it together. Psalm chapter 13. David says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountiful, bountifully with me. So as you look at this psalm, as we read this psalm, you may notice that it's grouped into three sets of two verses. So one and two, three and four, five and six. And each set of verses has a different theme and a different purpose. In the first two verses, we hear David speak of his emotions, speak of the things that he's going through. And he says, how long? Four times there. Then in verses 3 to 4, we see a shift where he's going from explaining what he's going through to a prayer to God. We see David pleading with God in this desperate situation. And then in the final two verses, we see another shift from the prayer into David speaking his, of his trust in the Lord. Even in this most difficult situation, he still trusts in God. He trusts in who God is and he trusts in what God has done. So we're going to break it down, each section, starting with verses 1 and 2. So if you look at these words, if you look at the words that David pens here, it's obvious to see that they were written out of a desperate place, a difficult place that he was in. We hear the plea of a desperate man dealing with an impossible situation, but yet he is real with the Lord here. And also notice, just a side note that I've mentioned the last couple weeks, you may notice that in verse 1, in verse 3, and verse 6, all the letters in Lord are capitalized. So again, it's 
would have been written as Yahweh or the Tetragrammaton in the original language that they would have not read, but the Lord's covenant name, I am who I am, given to the people of Israel in the book of Exodus. So just remember that, think about that. But we see that he's real with God, he's real with the Lord about his emotions here. So think uh, of yourself. Have you ever found yourself in that place when you're in a desperate, difficult situation? You're struggling with the place that you are. Have you ever been in that similar situation where we see David himself as he wrote these words? I think psalms such as this one are so important for us to have, for us to be able to access, to be able to read and understand, to show that as David was here, we too can be real with our emotions before God. We have looked at the different types of psalms over the last few weeks, ones that, that show different ways that we can relate to God. We've seen ways that we can learn from Him, to learn from God's wisdom. We've seen that we can praise God for who He is, for how He blesses us. And we've seen last week that we can have confidence, even in the most difficult times, that He will be with us, that He cares for us, that He will protect us all the time. And now, this week, we can... Uh, we see that as we struggle, we see that as we are up upset, as we are in a desperate, most difficult situation, we can be real with God, with our emotions, with our feelings. And we can read Psalms such as this one to help us sort through these feelings that we are having. And we can even use them as prayers to God to get the voice out, to get the words out of how we're feeling in those difficult situations. Again, I ask, have you ever been in that place where you feel far from God? Maybe you're in that place right now. That relationship that once felt so close and so personal and so real now feels somehow distant. You've endured many difficult weeks, many months, even years, wondering when things would improve, when things would start to look up. And this is what we see here from David. He pleads with God, How long, O Lord? How long? Where his relationship with God had once been close, it had been so intimate. He was a man after God's own heart, as it says in the Bible. Now he feels forgotten by God. He feels like God has hidden his face from him. So, but also as we read these words, as we read these emotional words from David, it's important to realize that God does not forget his people. God does not forget his people. Many times when we feel that distance, we feel forgotten, we feel neglected, we feel alone. Many times we feel that. There's a separation in our relationship with God. It's not because of what he has done or who he is. Many times it's because of our side. It's a period of time where we haven't been investing in that relationship. Or maybe there's something that's separating us from him. Perhaps it's just a difficult period of life that we're enduring. That you've experienced a loss or multiple losses and wondering why all these things are happening and creating that distance from God, creating that separation. Maybe it feels like everything is going wrong in that time. Yet in that time, as David does here, turn to God. Even in your po that point of darkness, that point of desperation. He is there. He is never far away. He is waiting. He's listening. He's watching. So in that time, turn to Him. Turn to God. Be real with your emotions before Him. For God gave them to us. God gave us emotions. They're not a bad thing to feel emotions, to feel upset, to feel desperate, to feel in that, to be in that place. And as it says in Psalm 9 verse 12, as I mentioned before, He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. So the author, David, we see here, he feels forgotten and ignored, but this is not the truth. God did not forget him. In the same way, you may, you may feel forgotten. You may feel cast aside. Maybe you have in the past, maybe you will in the future, but you are not forgotten. God has not cast you aside. God loves you. God loves you. God loves each and every one of us. He desires you. He desires your heart. He desires your life. He desires all of you. He desires your everything. As we talked about last week, as we considered God as the good shepherd, will you be willing to turn your life, to surrender your life to the direction of God, the good shepherd who wants us, who desires our lives? And in verse 2, we see David to continue to ask, How long? He says, how long must I take counsel in my soul? How long must I have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? 
So not only does he feel far from God, does he feel forgotten, like God has turned his face away from him. It says he feels sorrow all of the day long. Perhaps you have found yourself in a place like this. Perhaps you have been in a place where it feels like there's no way out of it. You're feeling sorrow all the day long, to be full of sorrow. It can be so difficult to be in that place and to find a way out. You may look around as David did. You may see your enemies doing well. See those who openly reject God be rewarded with riches and fame and a blessed life. Yet your life is not going how you hoped it would. You experience something that you never thought you would experience. You've been in that dark place. So where do you turn in that moment? What hope do you have when it feels like everything is going wrong? As we see with David here, the hope we have is in God. We can turn to God as he does in verses 3 and 4. As I said already, in the first two verses, we see David sharing this frustration with God, sharing this deep and this difficult time, being real with his emotions, being real with his difficult state that he was in. And then in verse 3 and 4, we see him making actions to move forward from that place, to not stay in that place, that he, to move out of that place that he's been stuck in. As I said, in that dark place, what hope do you have? In that difficult place, what hope do you have? David still recognized that his hope was in God, even in that moment. So he turns to him as we see. He went from the place of despair, the place of difficulty, to turning to God and pleading with God to help him, to help him out of that place. Even though he felt far from God, even though he felt like God's face was turned away, he could no longer feel his presence, he knew God would still hear him out of that place of despair. He pleads to God here to consider his cry, to answer his call. He trusts in God. He tr still trusts in God, trusting in his love, in his mercy, in his grace. And he knows that the only way out of this situation is by God helping him, that God would answer him, that God would rescue him from this place, that it says he may not sleep the sleep of death. So... Consider, as David says here, when we deal with trials, when we deal with those difficulties, when we deal with the dark, the lonely, the empty times in our lives, do we still believe in God's love? Do we still believe in His mercy? Do we still believe in His grace? Do we still trust Him? In that dark time, do we still worship Him? Do we still know that He is good? Do we cry out in our desperate place, Blessed be the name of the Lord, as we saw Job do in Job 1 when he had lost everything. In that place, would we honestly say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, in that dark, desperate place. Can we honestly say that in those dark times, we will turn to Him? Can we say in our own lives, in the past, when we've been in those places, have we turned to God? And if not... Ask yourselves, why not? Consider, why not, in that place that we haven't turned to God. David began this psalm in that place of despair, that place of desperation, wondering what has happened. What had happened with that relationship? Why does God feel so far away? But he does not remain in that place. He does not remain in that place. I think of David and his experience and his words here. And I think of the many stories I've heard of people who endure some kind of difficult or tra traumatic event in their life. And they question why God could let that difficult, hap that difficult thing happen to them. And it causes them to walk away from God, to never turn back. Or a person endures some kind of opposition in church. Some kind of a broken relationship. Something goes wrong that they didn't expect. And it causes them to lose their faith. Or you see a person on fire for God. I've seen this in my own life. A person who was on fire for God in his gospel and sharing his gospel with people who would listen, who all of a sudden becomes distracted by the pleasures of the world and the things around them and never looks back to Jesus again. May this not be in our lives. When you are in that place of desperation, when you go through that difficult time, may we not turn away from God, but may we turn to him as we see David do here. David was at this point of crisis in his life. It felt like he was completely alone in the world. He could no longer feel God's presence. It felt like his enemies were closing in on him, that they were about to prevail over him, to rejoice over him. But does this cause David to lose his faith? Does this cause him to walk away from God? Does this cause him to deconstruct his faith, as people would say today? No. No, it does not. 
It's quite the opposite, actually. Rather than remaining in that place of despair, rather than wondering if he will ever feel close to God again, he prays to God and he asks God to step in in that difficult situation. And not only this, not only does he pray to God, but after he shares this prayer, after he pleads with God, we see the psalm finish off as he proclaims his trust and his belief and his worship of God and who he is and what he has done. Let's read verses 5 to 6 again as we consider these last two verses. David shares, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord. Because he has dealt bountifully with me. So again, we continue that progression through the psalm. Through the first two verses to the second to now the last two. From, it started from that place of despair, that place of desperation. Secondly, we see David in that place of prayer. Pleading with God to help him in this place. And then he finishes off with worship. Worship of God and who he is. So even in this most difficult, this dark place that David found himself in. We see that he had not lost his faith in God. He had not lost his trust in God. Rather, he says that he trusted in God, in God's steadfast love that he gives to us. Even though he may have not felt God's love at that moment, he knows that God's love is always there. That God's love is perfect, always. And that God's love is steadfast through everything, no matter what. And he trusts in this fact. He holds on to this fact in his most difficult time. Even though David openly wondered in the first two verses whether God would help him. As he shares, he wondered if God would protect him and restore him. It says that, in his, that his heart would still rejoice in God's salvation. The salvation that he knew God would still offer him. Even if we are struggling in our life. Even if it feels like nothing is going right in our life. If it feels like everything that we thought was going to happen did not happen. The things that could never happen happened to us. We find ourselves in that desperate situation. We can still rejoice in God and His salvation that He offers us. For no matter what we endure in this life, we know that this life on earth is not all that there is. We have a hope beyond this life. As I said, what hope can we have? We have hope beyond this life, beyond the grave, that we can and that we will have eternal life with our Lord. So may we rejoice in this fact. May we rejoice in this salvation as we hear David do here. And then finally he closes off the psalm by saying, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So what a shift we see in this short psalm, in these six short verses. I think this is why it's such a beautiful psalm. We see this shift. We see the progression. We see David starting off by saying, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? And then he closes off by saying, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Even in that place, David still recognizes how much he has been blessed by God. How much he has been blessed by this God who graciously gives him all things that he needs. When we deal with hard times, it can be so easy to just focus on the negative thing right in front of us. And forget all the good things that God has done. All the good things that He has blessed us with. The good things that He is doing. The things that He is working in our lives. And the things that are to come that He will do for us. As I asked last week, consider your life. Consider this moment. Consider this day. Are we grateful for another day to live? To be here? Are we grateful for the breath in our lungs? For the food that we have to eat? For family around us? For the roof over our heads? We could go on and on with the blessings that God gives to us day by day. But I know how it can be. I understand how it can be when you're in that difficult place, when you're facing that trial, when you're facing some kind of difficult time or most desperate time. We forget the good things that we receive from God. But may we look at this psalm, may we consider the words of David that he wrote here in Psalm 13. May we remember these words. May we see the beauty in it, in this progression, in the things that he shares. And may we consider also how we will face those difficult times as they come. Considering again these three sections of verses, we can remember how first, David was real with his emotions. He was real with the place that he was in. He was real with his struggles, with his doubts. He was not hiding them, not casting them aside, not pushing them down. He was voicing them to the Lord. 
Second, after he shared these things, after he shared his emotions, he shared his struggles, we see that he prayed to the Lord, that he asked God to help him out of the impossible, desperate situation he found himself in. And then lastly, we see in the last two verses again that he worshipped the Lord. David worshipped the Lord. He proclaimed his worship for God, his thankfulness to God for all he is and for all that he had done and would do. So may we consider this. May we consider these words. May we consider and remember this psalm as we face trials in our life. But not only when we face trials, but every day that we would consider how David spoke here. That we also can be open with our emotions. That we can share our emotions. That our emotions are a good thing. And that they don't need to be pushed down. But that they can be shared. That we can come to the Lord in prayer. That we would come to the Lord in prayer regularly. Not just in that desperate place, but every day. And that we will be people of worship as David was here. That he was sharing this worship of God. Not only of who God is, but of what he was doing in his life. Even in the most desperate, difficult place. That we would also express gratitude every day. As I mentioned this morning. That we would express that gratitude every day for the blessings that we receive from God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Let's pray. Lord God, you are so good and we thank you this morning for who you are. Just that we can be here this morning, we have this building to be here. We are each here to worship you, Lord God, and we are so thankful. We thank you for your word that can challenge us, that can encourage us, and that we consider, as David did, where we will turn, what we will do in that most difficult place as we face difficult times. Lord God, you are so good and we thank you for this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.